Hi there, and welcome back to Two Chicks Going Green. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about two really interesting topics that have to do with sustainable living in this day and age. The first is the zero waste movement, and the second is eco-anxiety. Both are pretty new and can be quite confusing, so we wanted to take some time to get into both of these in a little bit more detail. We're going to start by discussing the zero waste movement what being zero waste is, as well as lessons we've learned about this lifestyle and tips we hope will help guide you. Then we'll get into eco-anxiety, what this term means and some tips on how we personally deal with it that can maybe help you if you struggle with it too. Did you know that the average American produces 1,500 pounds of trash per year? Meanwhile, Katherine Kellogg, a young millennial, became famous when she downsized her trash pile to the point where two years worth of trash literally fit inside of one 16 ounce jar. And those were just the items she wasn't able to compost or recycle. So this was one of the first times that the zero waste movement started to gain exposure and popularity. Yeah, along with this increased awareness of our global waste problem though, also unfortunately came eco-anxiety. Let's start with what the zero waste movement is. More and more people around the world are trying to be as zero waste or as low waste as possible nowadays. And this means that we're trying to reduce our waste as much as we possibly can. That includes food, clothing, furniture, you name it. Simply put, the zero waste philosophy is to send nothing to the landfill. The less simple answer is that it's about redefining the system. We currently live in a linear economy where we take resources from the earth to produce items that we then end up dumping into giant holes in the ground, aka landfills. The goal of zero waste is to move to a circular economy where we write trash out of the equation instead. A circular economy mimics nature in that there is no trash in nature. Instead of discarding resources, we create a system where all resources can be resumed fully back into the system. There are a few main philosophies or guiding principles behind zero waste, and these are Refuse. Don't accept stuff that will just become waste just because it's free. For example, plastic cutlery, plastic water bottles, or plastic bags. Reduce. Don't buy things you don't really need and follow a minimalist approach. Reuse and repair. Repurpose worn out items and repair broken ones. Shop for pre-owned goods and purchase reusable products that eliminate the need for single use. Our top 10 eco challenges are really great for reducing your single use waste and improving your environmental impact, so make sure you check those out. Compost. Up to 80% of waste by weight is organic, but it rarely decomposes in landfills. Make sure to check out our video on composting basics. And if all else fails, recycle. It still takes energy and resources to recycle, but it's better than sending stuff to the landfill or allowing it to become litter. And if you do recycle, make sure you are recycling properly. Watch our Plastics 101 video for more information on this topic. Now, while the zero waste movement has tons of benefits and is a really important movement for getting our society to start to recognize all the waste that we produce and live more sustainably, we don't particularly love the name zero waste and that's because it doesn't exist. No, in this day and age, it's nearly impossible to have a job, a family, a social life, yeah. and to be completely zero waste unless you literally spend all of your time doing this yeah. or you live off grid, which most people don't. No. This is exactly why we believe that the fit your trash in a jar trend doesn't help the movement at all. Truth is, it's unrealistic in today's world and it creates this impossibly perfect goal that we're trying to reach. So it deters people who are trying to start their journey to lowering their waste from even starting it because it sounds so, so stressful. Plus, fitting all your waste in a jar gives a false sense of how zero waste you can actually be because for the people that have actually done this, they recycle things. And as you know from other videos of ours, Recycling is definitely not a solution to our global waste problem since only about 10% of what we recycle actually gets recycled. The rest just goes to landfills like other waste. So in other words, we think that the name given to this movement really intimidates people from actually making those small, easy, and impactful changes, which is what our YouTube channel is all about. So we really wish that it was called the low waste movement because in reality, cutting out unnecessary waste is really about reducing our waste as much as we possibly can, not about being perfect. Exactly. Which brings us to eco-anxiety. We both strongly believe that being sustainable is a balance between doing your best eco-wise and staying healthy both mentally and physically. Yeah, incorporating that one change at a time and really understanding the impact that that change has 
helps you to stay motivated and sane, at least it has for us. <laughs> so that's why it's so, so important to just learn in the process and take your time. It isn't necessarily our fault individually that the planet is in the awful state that it's in. It's more so the fault of our government for not protecting our environment and our future well enough. Yeah, and corporations like Coca-Cola and Nestle who exploit the planet and our health for profit. Nonetheless, we still need to take action as consumers. Make sure to watch our video on this topic. And while taking action and living more sustainably takes effort, too much too fast or feeling very helpless about the state of our planet can lead to eco-anxiety, which is officially defined as persistent worries about the future of the Earth and the life that it shelters. People around the world are starting to experience this anxiety at varying levels because they feel as though they can't control environmental problems like climate change or because of the negative impact that their or their generation's behavior has on the environment and that of our future generations. And eco-anxiety happens differently for everyone. For me, of course, it's worrying about, oh my gosh, what if we don't change our ways enough? Or am I doing enough to help the problem? But those kinds of things I deal with relatively well, relatively being the operating word. <laughs> um, and they hit me once in a while, especially when I watch documentaries. I know this happens to you too. <laughs> but what hits me more on a daily basis when I feel ego anxiety the most I'd say nowadays is when I come across situations like they won't take my to-go container at the restaurant I'm at or um, deciding between products. That to me, oh, it's so stressful. Because I know these small changes and choices add up, so I think the official definition doesn't quite encompass all the reasons why someone may feel eco-anxiety. When choosing between products, I struggle because sometimes the lines are quite blurry on what the most sustainable option is. Greenwashing, which we'll be doing a video on soon by the way, doesn't help at all. While many products nowadays promise that they're all natural or non-toxic, sometimes it takes lots of digging and research to find out whether they're really good for the planet and our health. I know Amanda and I have put in lots of hours doing this. The silver lining to this issue is that once you find a good product, you can just keep buying that one, so over time this issue lessens. And if you struggle with this too, by the way, make sure to check out our eco product reviews because these are all products that Amanda and I have found and used and we really like them and they're good for the planet. Another cause of eco-anxiety for me is the choices I need to make as someone who eats fully plant-based. It means that I have to choose my health over zero waste sometimes. Most vegan products are packaged in plastic, and since pretty much everything else I buy when I shop is plastic-free or in bulk, I struggle with this a lot. Last but not least, there's living with others. Not everyone has the same level of devotion to living sustainably, so I have to accept that sometimes. At the end of the day, all I can really do is lead by example and make all the changes that I possibly can that are within my power and hope that I can help others when possible to live more sustainably. And understanding this has been really important in keeping my eco anxiety in check. So to me personally, I think finding that balance between being our best but also enjoying our life is key because if not, what's the point of it all, right? Yeah, I totally agree, and I also have a lot of similar experiences. One thing that gives me a lot of eco-anxiety is when I know I could have done better, but I just simply didn't have enough time. For example, instead of buying hummus, I try to make my own from beans I buy in bulk. And I know Tanya does this too, but sometimes I simply don't have the time to make it, and I end up buying it pre-packaged, and I get upset with myself for this. But there's only so much time and I have to eat well and take care of myself. So the next week I try to make it a priority to meal prep so this doesn't happen. I also really want children someday so I get very worried about what their future will look like and sometimes it makes me not want to have kids. But all I can do is try to do as much as I can without overwhelming myself, know that I can't change it all on my own, and try my best to educate others. Another thing I want to mention is some parts of living zero waste come down to what we are used to and our belief systems. For example, most people, like me, struggle with how some eco products just aren't as effective as other stuff we're used to, especially cleaning products. We are so accustomed to things being perfectly clean or else they are deemed dirty or unhealthy or socially unacceptable. And this isn't necessarily true, but it's how I was raised and what I learned growing up. So I subconsciously think that if something doesn't look sparkling clean, like my white clothes or my bathroom, then it isn't clean. And my white clothes are clean if they have stains on them. They just aren't perfectly white anymore. So it's hard for me to get past this mentally. I also struggle with being tempted 
by things like beauty products. I do enjoy getting dressed up and doing my hair and makeup, but sometimes I struggle to find products that are good for the environment and my health. Make sure to watch our video on toxic ingredients to learn more about this topic. So in conclusion, to keep my eco-anxiety low, it's really important for me to be prepared, also remind myself that I'm a human and nobody's perfect. On top of it, having a different outlook on things. To celebrate also my accomplishments and reflect on things that actually work for me. If you struggle with more debilitating eco-anxiety, we've added a link to a page full of helpful resources in the description below. As well as links to interesting articles on this topic in case you want to do more reading on it. We've also included our Ko-fi page linked below, so if you really like this video and you found it helpful, please consider buying us a coffee or two on there. Yes, please do so. <laughs> and if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we have lots of videos on sustainable mm -hmm. living eco product reviews, gift ideas, eco, eco challenges. challenges, all that <laughs> stuff. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments section below and we will get back to you. And we hope to see you in the next one. Yes. Bye, Bye. guys.